Let's start by watching the clip of a TED Talk titled How I Beat the Stage Fright. The speaker is Joe Cohen, a musician who was extremely afraid of performing on stage. I have stage fright. I have always had stage fright, and not just a little bit. It's a big bit. And it didn't even matter until I was 27. That's when I started writing songs. And even then, I only played them for myself. Just knowing my roommates were in the same house made me uncomfortable. But after a couple of years, just writing songs wasn't enough. I had all these stories and ideas, and I wanted to share them with people. But physiologically, I couldn't do it. I had this irrational fear. But the more I wrote, and the more I practiced, the more I wanted to perform. So on the week of my 30th birthday, I decided I was going to go to this local open mic and put this fear behind me. Well, when I got there, it was packed. There were like 20 people there. <laughs> and they all looked angry. But I took a deep breath, and I signed up to play, and I felt pretty good, pretty good, until about 10 minutes before my turn, when my whole body rebelled and this wave of anxiety just washed over me. Great. Later in the video, I'll show you a clip in which Joe will tell us how he overcame his fear. For the time being, let's meet Mr. Sam, a big businessman who lived 100 years before Joe Cohen. But his situation was not much different. Some of you would know that author Dale Carnegie was the most famous speaking coach in his day. He trained thousands of people in his public speaking classes. He narrates an incident about Mr. Sam. Mr. Sam was having a lunch with Dale Carnegie one day. He leaned across the table and whispered, Mr. Carnegie, I have been asked many times to speak in public, but I have never been able to do so. My mind goes blank at the very thought, so I have avoided it all my life. But recently, I became the chairman of the college board. Now I can't avoid it. Do you think I can learn to speak so late in life? Dale Carnegie replied, No, I don't think, Mr. Sam. Rather, I know you can and I know you will. The only condition is that you learn the subject and practice. It is so simple. It's like learning to play a sport. Mr. Sam joined Dale Carnegie's classes and he progressed at a rate that surprised even himself. In two months, he had become the star speaker of his class and he was soon accepting invitation to speak everywhere. There are so many people who ask, why do I fear public speaking? Perhaps you got the answer from Joe Cohen. You are afraid because you are a human. You are afraid because fear of public speaking is the right reaction. When you stand up to speak, you are afraid that you will lose face if you didn't speak well. People will laugh at you behind your back. So how does your body react to this fear? Your heart starts beating faster. Your blood pressure goes up. Your palms start sweating. Maybe your hands and your legs start shaking. But please remember that your response is normal. It is fight or flight response that is deeply embedded in our systems. It is the same way we'll respond if a tiger suddenly appeared in front of us. So it's true that fear of public speaking happens to everyone, especially in the beginning of their speaking experience. And it is also true that some people experience it more than others. But apart from the natural reaction of the body, are there other things which are causing our fear? Yes, there are primarily three such causes. Number one, when we are nervous, we feel that the audience can look inside our head and see that we are nervous. This is called illusion of transparency. We feel as if we are already failing. Number two, we are a bad judge of our speaking ability. Ask any speaker after a speech how they performed. They will always rate themselves lower than they actually were. Don't do that. You were much better than you think you were. Finally, the third thing that might be making you nervous is a combination of many factors. For example, if it is a formal speech on stage, it is more frightening than an informal speech. And if people in the audience are above you in status, you might feel more nervous. And if you are being graded, say in a test, you will feel more anxious. So speech apprehension is always a factor. But thankfully, with training, you can overcome this fear. And training is what this series of videos is all about. Right? If you are following all the videos in the correct sequence, you are on your way to overcoming your fear. So here are the seven methods which will help you overcome your fear of public speaking. Number one, 
remember the facts about the fear of public speaking. Number two, prepare in a proper way. Number three, practice, practice, practice. Number four, imagine your speech as a relaxed and pleasant experience. Number five, predetermine your mind to success. Number six, change your assumptions about the speaking experience. And number seven, act confident. So the first method to overcome your fear is remember the facts about the fear of public speaking. And what are those facts? There are three of them. Number one, as I said earlier, when it comes to fear of speaking in public, you are not unique. College surveys indicate that 80 to 90 percent of all students enrolled in speech classes are afraid at the beginning of the course. Number two, remember that some stage fear is actually useful. Yes, some amount of stage fear will help you perform better. By making you nervous, the nature is preparing you to meet the challenges. So when you notice your heart beating faster, don't be worried. Your body is getting ready to go into action. If these reactions are within limits, they will help you think faster and speak with greater fluency and intensity. Number three, remember that even the professional speakers never completely lose their fear of speaking. It is always there just before they start speaking. It is also there during the first few sentences of their talk. Nothing wrong with that. Virat Kohli would have faced 200 balls in practice yesterday, but he is still a little nervous when he faces the first few balls in an actual match. So remember these facts about the fear of public speaking. Firstly, you are not unique. Secondly, fear can be useful. And thirdly, even professional speakers feel nervous. So that was the first method. Remember the facts about the fear of public speaking. Coming to the second method, which is prepare in a proper way. Preparation is your most powerful weapon. You can't win a battle with defective weapons, right? Similarly, you can't overcome your fear of speaking with bad preparation. So here are four ways to prepare well. Number one, know your subject thoroughly. Read much more than you plan to talk about. The audience might never hear this extra information, but it will give you a lot of confidence. Number two, never memorize your speech word for word. Not required. If you do so, you will not come across as natural. There may be times when you may like to memorize and speak out some parts word for word. For example, introductions and conclusion. That is fine, but not the entire speech. Number three, arrange your ideas. What do I mean by that? You have heard my key point speeches in the first two videos. So first write the main points, the takeaways that you want your audience to remember. Then write the supporting arguments for each of those points. For that, try to come up with examples from your personal experiences. And number four, rehearse your talk. Speak out loud to see whether the ideas are clicking in place. Discuss it with a friend as if you are having a conversation with him. If the conversation goes well and your friend is able to follow your key points, you are on the right track. So that was the second method, prepare in a proper way. Coming now to the third method, which is the most important, and it is practice, practice, practice. Let's see a clip of a TED talk titled My Stroke of Insight by Dr. Jill. Dr. Jill is a neuroscientist. This is one of the most watched TED Talks. On TED and YouTube combined, it has 40 million views. This is a portion of my brain that I lost on the morning of my stroke. On the morning of the stroke, I woke up to a pounding pain behind my left eye. And it was the kind of pain, caustic pain, that you get when you bite into ice cream. And it just gripped me. And then it released me. And then it just gripped me and then it released me. And it was very unusual for me to ever experience any kind of, of pain, so I thought, okay, I'll just start my normal routine. So I got up and I jumped onto my cardio glider, which is a full body, full exercise machine. And I'm jamming away on this thing, and I'm realizing that my hands look like primitive claws grasping onto the bars. Now, how is that her performance is so flawless? All her expressions and hand movements are so smooth. It's simple. She practiced this speech 200 times 
In fact, all great speakers are great precisely because they practice like crazy. So even if you forget everything else from this video, just remember that in the beginning, there are no fearless speakers and no great speeches. The speakers become fearless and speeches become great when they are practiced enough. So that was the third method. Practice, practice, practice. Coming now to the fourth method, which is imagine your speech as a pleasant experience. The scientists who have researched the fear of public speaking call it systematic desensitization. Many sportsmen use this method. For example, the cricketers go to the pitch on which the match is going to be played. They sit there and imagine the balls coming at them. It's like playing a match in a relaxed state of mind. So how to do it for speeches? Sit on a comfortable chair, breathe slowly and focus one by one on each part of your body. And once you are thoroughly rela relaxed, imagine giving a talk. First imagine you are just telling a story to a group of friends. Then imagine you are giving a project update to your colleagues. And then imagine you are giving a formal speech to an audience of higher status. As you reflect like this, your mind starts getting used to the idea of speaking and desensitized to the fear. So that was the fourth method. Imagine your speech as a pleasant experience. Coming to the fifth method, which is predetermine your mind to success. Scientists call this method visualization. In this technique, you imagine yourself giving a successful speech. So how do you do it? Firstly, have faith in the merit of your ideas. Convince yourself that you are going to tell the audience something that they will find useful, that you are going to add value to their lives and that they are going to thank you for that. To achieve that, do as much preparation as you can. For example, for making these videos, I read three books and did an online course from the University of Washington. Having done that, I feel really confident that I am going to contribute to your success in life. So what is the visualization technique? Again, get a comfortable chair, do some deep breathing and relax your muscles. Think about all the four stages of speech. Stage one, anticipation. That is just before the speech starts. Stage two, confrontation. That is the first minute of your speech. Stage three, adaptation. That is the speech after the first minute. And finally, stage four, release. That is the time after the speech is over. So you think about all these stages, how you will look good on stage, how the audience will clap for you, how the speech will enhance your prestige and help you succeed and so on. Remember, the more clearly you visualize, the more confident you will feel. So that was the fifth method, predetermine your mind to success. Coming now to the sixth method, which is change your assumptions about the speaking experience. Scientists call it cognitive modification. So what are the assumptions that you need to change? Firstly, let's say you're worried that you might forget your speech. Tell yourself that you have practiced so well, you will not forget. Even if you do, you have your notes with you. It is like some people have fear of flying. They assume that their plane might crash. But then they think rationally that millions of people are flying every day and that flying is the safest mode of transportation. Once they think this way, they start feeling relaxed. Secondly, don't assume your speech as a performance. Change that assumption. Think of it as having a conversation. You do that every day, right? You have great conversation with your friends, colleagues and bosses. Just like those conversations, your speech is also going to be great. So that was the sixth method, change your assumptions about the speaking experience. Coming now to the seventh and final method, which is act confident. An army general was once asked, how are your soldiers so fearless? He said, fearless? They are actually very, very much afraid. When I started commanding them, I told them, when you go into the battle, you will always feel fear. That is natural. The way to overcome the fear is just act as if you are confident of winning the battle. Act as if you are not afraid. As time passes, your act will become your reality. Famous psychologist William James explained why this happens. 
he said that we often assume that we first feel confident and we then act confidently. So we assume that the feeling should come before the action, but actually it does not happen that way. In fact, action and feeling go together. Now please note that we can control our action, but not our feeling. So by regulating your action, you can change your feeling. So before your speech, even if you're not confident, act as if you are confident. Speak to people informally before the speech starts. Smile at them and you will feel that your fear is going away. So boys and girls, to conclude, if you are afraid of speaking in public, please know that you are not unique. Even seasoned speakers feel the same fear. You can overcome this fear by the seven techniques that we have discussed in this video. You can see them on the screen now. So remember that fear of public speaking is real, it's expected, but it's manageable. But one thing is certain, the only way you can learn to swim is to get into water. So do practice a lot. Choose an easy subject, write and deliver a three minute talk on the topic. Practice the talk by yourself a number of times. Then give it to your family or friends. Then go before your class and deliver it. You will experience a sense of achievement and pleasure that you have never experienced before. Before we finish, let's watch another clip of Joe Coven, the musician. He found a novel way of overcoming his fear of stage. He wrote a song telling the audience that he was afraid of singing in public. He started every performance with that song. In course of time, he says, he felt that he no longer needed the song. I hope that with the techniques that you have learned today, you will also craft your own methods of overcoming your fear of public speaking. I'm not joking, you know, this stage fright is real. I'd be making the tremolo caused by my whole body shaking as you sit there feeling embarrassed for me. Well, you don't have to be, well, maybe just a little bit. 